University of Ottawa Faculty of Medicine. No MCAT and the only medical school that teaches in French and English. We got an interview from U Ottawa Medical School this past cycle and we want to give you all the tips so you can achieve the same results. We also have a special guest towards the end of the video, so make sure you stay until the end. Be sure to like and subscribe and let's get on with the video. So let's start off with the admission stats like we do in our other videos. There were 4,823 applicants who applied in this past cycle, out of whom 580 were interviewed and 168 were admitted. This brings the acceptance rate to about 3.5%. However, you also have to keep in mind that every year there are about 118 people in the English stream and another 48 in the French stream. So the numbers can vary depending on how many applicants applied to each stream. Also, we'd like to mention that we are in no way associated with the admissions committee at U Ottawa, and we're only providing this information based on our own research and our personal experiences. But why is U Ottawa Medicine so desirable? Well, they consistently rank among the top 10 medical schools in Canada, and they also receive a lot of funding from the government for all the research that they do at their university. Their four-year program is split into two years of pre-clerkship and two years of post-clerkship, so pretty traditional of a medical school. U Ottawa Med is also the first and only bilingual medical school in Canada. And this gives you a lot of access to varied populations when you're in your clerkship, since there's going to be both languages. And they also have made sure that both of these programs are equally identical and accredited. U Ottawa also is in the capital city of Canada, so you get access to a lot of other resources because there's parliament there, there's a lot of bigger companies there that you can partner with. And U Ottawa also has a lot of international partnerships that you can benefit from if you go to their university. Now, let's go over the application process. If you want to apply to U Ottawa, you can only do so after your third year of study. And also, you need a bunch of prerequisites if you want to be considered. First, we have two semesters of social science or humanities course, two semesters of bio, then one semester of general chemistry, one semester of organic chemistry, one semester of biochemistry, and one of statistics. So there are a few prereqs you definitely need to consider. Also, for all of these prereqs, you will need to maintain a 3.0 GPA on a 4.0 scale if you want to be considered. And finally, you need to have finished all of these courses before you attend medical school. Now, as you may have heard, U Ottawa is well known for their weighted GPA calculation, or let me rephrase, was well known for their weighted GPA calculation. So what they used to do was they would give the highest weighting to your most recent marks. So for example, if you applied after your third year, they'd give the highest weighting to your third year marks and then followed by your second year and then finally your first year. That used to be the case, but now they switched back to CGPA, unfortunately. According to their website, U Ottawa says that their minimum GPA cutoff is 3.5 on the 4.0 scale. However, they also mentioned that 3.85 is somewhere that should be considered competitive. Based on this past cycle and what we've seen on forums and on Reddit, 3.85 is often seen as a cutoff. So you have to have a mark that's substantially higher than it or have to make up for it in other ways such as Casper or your ABS or your interview. Another note is that U Ottawa actually looks at your summer courses and I know this is confusing for a lot of other med schools but we wanted to include it here. U Ottawa is one of the only med schools in Canada that actually doesn't require the MCAT for its application process. Yes! 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 So if you're planning on applying here, don't worry about writing the MCAT or getting a good score. It's definitely not required. However, the MCAT is required for most other med schools in the province and across Canada. The last academic requirement is the CASPER test. Now, a lot of us have very strong opinions about this test, but if they don't count the MCAT, then we can only assume that CASPER is very important for the admissions process. So work very hard for this test and try your best to get a fourth quartile because that will give you the best chances of getting an interview. What's remaining now is your ABS or autobiographical sketch. The ABS has up to 32 entries that you can fill up and it has various sections like volunteering and extracurriculars. But U Ottawa is unique because it asks you to pick three activities in each of those sections totaling up to a maximum of 18 activities. So you're going to select these on OMSAS 
and we don't know how much weight they actually put on the activities that you don't select. Nevertheless, just make sure you put your full effort into all 32 entries because you never know if that's going to get you an interview or not. You will need a total of three references for your application. One of them is employment slash academic related. The other one is non-academic and the last one can be of your choosing. So any category that I've mentioned here. One thing you have to keep in mind is that once you fill out the contact information of your references, a confidential assessment form will be sent to their email. That's what they have to fill out in order to be your reference. And here are some of the questions they actually include on the form. You can find these on the OMSAS website. After you complete this lengthy admissions process, all you have to do now is wait, wait, and wait. If you get an interview from New Ottawa, you'll probably get an email towards late January, and you'll be asked to attend the interview in February or March. And New Ottawa generally takes a more um, traditional approach by conducting an interview in a panel format where two or three people interview you but it's more traditional rather than the new modern style that's being used by other universities called MMI or multiple mini interviews. Now that the interviews are completed, all you can do is wait till that second Tuesday of May when you get that email regarding the status of your application. I'm sure all of you will do fantastic and every one of you will get it. So that was the entire admissions process and we hope you understood everything. Now to give you a little bit of a sense of what Ottawa is like and how to get into these medical schools, we asked a YouTuber, Diago Lusfargi, to come and give you guys some advice about how to get into Ottawa, what to do in medicine, and just general things that I'm sure will help you a lot. Take it away, Diago. Hey, my name is Thiago Luzvargi. I am a third year medical student studying at the University of Ottawa. Um, I have a YouTube channel, so make sure to follow me. Instagram, follow me there, message me at any time. All right, why did I choose Ottawa? There are a couple of reasons why I chose to apply to this school particularly. The first one is because it doesn't require an MCAT and I did very poorly on the MCAT a couple of times, so I knew that my saving grace would be either Ottawa or Nassim in Sudbury because neither of them look there. Then I considered the city as well and I heard that Ottawa is a beautiful city. It's a population of a million people but does not feel like that. There's a lot of greenery within the city. I heard it has a very positive student atmosphere where people are very supportive of each other. It's not cutthroat, not saying that other schools are, but that's just what I heard. And so those are the main reasons why I applied to Ottawa and then why I chose it, because Ottawa chose me. I didn't get any other um, acceptances to other medical schools, so when you get chosen, you just go. And that was kind of the, the joke in our first day of class when everybody gave their reason for choosing Ottawa. The next question is, what can you find at U Ottawa Med that can't be found at other medical schools in Canada? That's a tricky question uh, because I don't know what other schools offer and don't offer, but I'll list some of the things that come to mind that I know um, has been highlighted as being special to Ottawa, okay? So in clerkship, the first two years of medical school, um, we have half days, so for most of the days, we just have lectures from 8.30 to 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. Then you have the rest of the day off, and that is wonderful for being able to actually study, to enjoy life and hobbies, to run a, start a YouTube channel and hang out with friends um, and family, and that's very important. I think I've, I've chatted with some University of uh, Toronto students, and I don't think that's their lifestyle. It's pretty much like lecture heavy most of the day. We have really good clinical teaching sessions that I enjoy, our PSD, Physician Skills Development classes. Um, and also the other thing is that we get to do electives right out of first year. So if you want to go and experience what plastic surgery is like, orthopedic surgery, um, you just message the coordinator, you message the doctor, set that up, and you can shadow them for however long as you want. The next question is, if you had to pinpoint one thing that got you into medicine, what would it be? There's probably not one thing, but if we go through the list, it's not gonna be the GPA. Like, it's your foot in the door, but everybody has a high GPA. There's probably some aspects in my application. So I was able to get some early on, like clinical shadowing experience. I have a cousin in Brazil that does orthopedic surgery, so that might have helped. I don't know how much they value the clinical experience. So having good um, APS, auto 
a BS autobiographical sketch in your OmSAS application is beneficial. Casper, it's, you know, it gets your foot in the door to an interview. And then what I think really made the difference was most likely it was the interview and being able to talk through my reasoning, share stories, connect. Um, and that is where you make the impression that you are going to be a great colleague to those doctors and uh, so we had a panel interview. So there's three people, there's a doctor, a resident, and somebody from the community. And so you really have to make a good impression. And I think I did that. I was, I was a warm, warm uh, personality, uh, made him laugh. Uh, we had a good time and it was stressful, but overall, I think it was the interview that really won them over. And then I will say this, a little caveat, a little nuance to medical schools. I have heard that certain medical schools, or maybe all of them, do have a demographic target, right? So if they notice that there's a lot of uh, Brazilians moving into the city and they wanna prepare Brazilian doctors, right, I'm Brazilian, then they might be more willing to take on Brazilian students that speak Portuguese to cater to that population. I'm not saying that Ottawa does that, or every school does that, but I think it is something to keep in the back of the mind that you could be highly qualified. Everybody who applies is most likely gonna be qualified and has what it takes to become a doctor. But at the end of the day, they might have a checklist that um, either you qualify or you don't, and it's not because you don't deserve it, it's just luck of the draw uh, for, for a lot of people. The last question is, why did you choose medicine as a career? It morphed from the beginning. so. I've wanted medicine since I was in elementary school. Again, I mentioned I have a cousin who does orthopedic surgery, so I was interested in doing orthopedic surgery. As I started to learn about the medical uh, lifestyle and what is what it takes to become a surgeon, I was like, you know what? I don't want that lifestyle. I'm not really that committed to an extra five years of residency. Um, and once I did a couple of surgery rotations here, I was like, yep, nope, I'm not doing on, staying on call for that that kind of thing. So I've leaned, I've changed my desire, my passion to be more family medicine oriented. And then even within that, I have discovered that I want to do preventative medicine. So functional medicine or also called integrative medicine, where you use diet and lifestyle to prevent or reverse chronic diseases, like reversing type two diabetes or even preventing it through eating a healthy diet and exercise. So I think that matches my definition of medicine or what I envision medicine to truly be instead of just being all about medications. Not that there's anything wrong about that, but I uh, sense um, an increased passion and a thrill for helping people in, in that way. And then the last bit is also, it's more financially secure, you know? Uh, a lot of people don't like to talk about money, but it's the truth. The money is a factor. It's important to consider and you can't write that off. Don't worry. It's okay to, to like money. Just don't fall in love with it and don't let it be the sole reason. But if you're going to work hard, you're going to study for years, um, you better hope that you're going to get compensated, right? And so it's nice that you do have that, that stability, although it has been shaken up a little bit during the pandemic. Um, and those are the three main reasons and why I chose medicine. I hope those answers were beneficial and helpful. If you have any other questions, drop them down in the comments. Message me on Instagram. I reply to every message and I hope to see you guys over on my channel or on Instagram or even in real life one day if you're around here in Ottawa. Take care. Thank you so much, Thiago, for all that wonderful advice that you were giving us. I'm sure the audience will really enjoy it. So if you liked the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And we also have a full series of these videos. We've done Queens and U of T and now Ottawa. We're going to be making videos for all the other medical schools in Ontario. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you next Monday.